It's Saturday night, and this is the Modisa Network. Good evening. Tonight, the bombshell announcement that two commissions of Radio personality and CEO Tibo Touch and Tech Central's Duncan McLeod will join me on the couch. Welcome. Well, the first story this week, the public broadcaster announced it would be investigating sexual misconduct in the film and broadcasting industry. But what will the Commission of Inquiry achieve and will the predators end up in court? To find out how women activists feel about this, I'm joined by two women who are in the industry and they formed an organization called SWIFT, and that is Sisters Working in Film and Television. And my guests are Natalie Haroff, who's a director and cinematographer, and welcome, Natalie. Thank you, too. And uh, Zoe Ramushu, again, thank you very much for joining us, legal consultant and owner of a production company. Welcome. Now, you formed this organization in response to what you saw as an increasing problem, I suppose, in the film industry in particular, and you conducted a survey. Tell me a bit more about the findings of your survey. Okay, um, so firstly, Natalie and I are one of the many members. We're quite a broad group across Joburg, Cape Town, and Durban, um, which came together just to address all the needs in the industry for women. So we cover training, empowerment, we do screenings, et cetera, et cetera. But advocacy has been the major thing that we've been focusing on because of the obvious need of it. Mm. Um, so two years back, what we started with was our national survey where we just wanted to basically be able to quantify what sexual harassment is because it's quite a great area you know and there's you know whispers of it etc etc and we needed a solid document that actually spoke to exact figures and percentages of what women were feeling um, and so f I mean a lot of the, the statistics were quite shocking like 66.8 percent of women in the industry mm. don't feel safe when they're going to work and this is just basic safety you know and, and, and it was quite a sizable sample that I you mean, said it was, and it was across the nation. Yeah. So, I mean, it was quite, was harrowing. I mean, there's a lot of, like, the major issues we found were that also people don't know how to report. Yes. There are no reporting yeah. structures. Yeah, yeah. And because of the freelance nature and independent contractors' uh, way which the industry works, there's sure. no obligations like the way you would have with an employee and an employer so a lot of things have fallen through the cracks particularly in this industry but we also understand that it's not just specifically the film industry it's just that we're very visible um, and so that's where um, mm. our our campaign that's not okay sure um, started off. well well definitely a shocking statistic that I doubt very much that you expect that the outcome to be 66.7 percent as okay. you say and uh, yeah. the SABC has also announced that it will be conducting the Missions. We'll take a look at that. I'd mm -hmm. like the viewers at home to also participate in our conversation this yeah. evening, and you can do so on Twitter, hashtag Mudise Network. Now, let's take a look at what the acting CEO of the SABC said earlier this week. All right, well, that's the acting CEO of the SABC. In that clip, she talks about healing and awareness because they are conducting uh, the inquiry within the organization, but the industry is much bigger than that, Natalie. It, it, it is. Um, I can speak to what SWIFT has done. Yeah. I think in, in our reaction to our survey results, the fact that women 
an overwhelming amount of women don't feel safe to actually go to work which is wrong. We need to change that. So we, we headed up a, a massive overall campaign and, the f and this is three pronged. The first prong is to, to try and get codes of conduct into place. Believe it or not, we don't have that yet. Mm. The second one is, is to create awareness for both people who, who are potential victims and for people who are potential um, people who commit the crimes. Yeah. They don't even know that they're doing it. So an awareness campaign is necessary. And then the third part of it is to put safety measures in place. Now, so, I'm interested in the part where women say they feel unsafe at work, yes. right? Is it only in the case of harassment or is it to do with occupational safety? I'm just imagining that there could be a whole number of things that made women uh, feel um, uh, to feel unsafe. We particularly were, were questioning sexual harassment yeah. and misconduct. Yeah. Um, so, so, so that's what our report was, was asking about. It wasn't about um, workplace safety sure. or not. Uh, and so uh, sadly it is, is that they actually they feel their bodies um, are threatened. And typically what are women reporting in the industry? Yeah, so just to add to that, so sexual harassment is very dominantly about power. Yeah. So when it comes to particularly sex, everybody thinks that sexual harassment has to do purely with sex, but it does have direct implications on your job. You know what I mean? So yeah. if you're unwilling to exchange something in exchange for your job, you are fearful to lose your job. And that's what a lot of women were speaking out about, that when certain things happen, even though they know that they're not right, it's that the industry is so small that, OK, rather I just keep quiet and move on because I'll never get work again. Yeah. Speaking up has become a stigma of you become that problematic woman. And you know, no one's going to call you for the next job. And everybody knows in the industry, you're only as good as your last job. So that's one of the issues that SWIFT has been very consciously working on to address because we understand that, for example, when the Weinstein um, issue came up, a lot of people were, you know, calling on us to say, you know, what are you guys going to do? Are you going to encourage women to speak up? And we were very conscious that we will only encourage women to speak up when there is a safety net to catch them. Because unfortunately, speaking up and you have no safety valve, you're not going to work in this industry again. You know what I mean? And so that's what SWIFT is there to do, to empower women so that when they do speak up, their support structures and you know, things in place to ensure that you're, there's confidentiality when you're handling a case and making sure that you're not stigmatized by the industry. I want us to go back to that clip of the SABC to look at what the public broadcaster is trying to achieve with this uh, commission of inquiry. With the sexual harassment, we're just creating, a, first of all, it's an, an awareness and also a healing for those people that have, have experienced such. But it's also an opportunity to say that this is not something that the ACBC stands for. Natalie, are we likely to see the healing that she's talking about? And do you anticipate that there will be people who are coming forward within the ANC, I mean the SABC environment, I beg your pardon. Yeah. Well, I think what's been so interesting for us, Tim, is, is even just through the survey, um, uh, even ourselves, we, we took it, it was all anonymous, and we had to talk about stories that have happened in the past. And I personally found it quite interesting. I, I'm a, a cinematographer now and a director now, but most of my stories of um, improper conduct uh, with with unfortunately with men, um, ha happened a lot in my 20s. Mm. And I wasn't a re a really truly aware of it until I wrote it down. So what I'm saying is we're, we're starting to talk mm. and we're, we're creating safe spaces for women and perhaps other some men who've been victimized to, to, to talk and find a, a sisterhood and a unity with each other. So I think definitely with movements like hashtag me too, from the States uh, and, and now with us and the SABC coming out, I really do think that <coughs> perpetrators are going to start thinking twice mm. because we're talking about it. And that's our main aim is, is, is for, for people to actually think, okay, maybe I shouldn't be doing this. Well, the obvious parts are, are obvious. Uh, rape is, you're not allowed to do mm. that. Mm. That's a crime and it's mm. awful. But we're also dealing with the very gray areas where it starts. You, you don't just jump straight to attacking someone. It starts with small little comments, little 
touchings, and, and that's what SWIFT is dealing with our awareness campaign, which we lo launched this week. And it's called hashtag that's not okay, because we want to start talking about behaviors that are simply not okay. And um, like I said, a lot of, of, of men are kind of quite shocked. Oh, I, I didn't realize, mm. but that's the point. We, sure. we are helping you to see that that is wrong. But as you mentioned, you know, some of the behaviors are criminal in nature, yes. which includes rape, for instance. But the others, I suppose, can be stopped differently. You spoke about the comments and the touching and so forth. How do you go about teaching, educating, the women specifically in the industry about the kinds of things that are not okay? Well, that's where our campaign is, is really great. Our, our new video series that, that's our, it's uploaded to YouTube at the moment, um, where I think a lot of women themselves are, are quite kind of taken aback when they, they empathize and feel for the characters. We've basically dramatized real situations that happen in our industry and all all of our little films are drawn from actual accounts and, mm. and, and inspired by real stories so I think we're filmmakers and the best way to speak to each other is through film sure. and Tim I think almost everyone in the world be it a neuroscientist or, or, or an architect or, or a construction worker we all have a favorite sure. film or sure. a favorite TV series sure. or a soap and that's because we relate to seeing ourselves living a moment on screen and that's where our campaign has come up with with this awareness drive. Well, and of course, we've seen in the United States in particular certain prosecutions taking place. You've mentioned Weinstein earlier yeah. on. We've seen Bill Cosby and others uh, now being embarrassed. In South Africa, allegations have been made. Are there any prosecutions underway at the moment? I mean, so there's been allegations against a certain well-known director in the industry um, that came across a lot on social media. Um, they started, all the accusations came out on there, and there are still allegations because they're unfounded. Um, but there's been active work, which is part of what SWIFT has been doing, because previously what would happen if someone was to speak up, like I mentioned, it's a power dynamic. Mm. And unfortunately, the victims are usually the ones that are powerless. So in this particular case, we had an instance where a letter was sent out um, telling this girl that she must take down her statements, retract it, or she's going to be sued for defamation. I mean, she was traumatized. Of course, she has no idea what she can be sued for. She can't. She has no idea how much a lawyer is going to cost. It's just sounds like a mammoth task to get involved in but that's exactly what our mandate as swift is sure. to amplify voices like that to assure you that okay when you do speak up there is a big sister in and, and, and the, pro to, yeah. the production companies are they responding positively to your campaign and what yeah. advice would you give yeah. women who might be subjected to this improper behavior so production companies are reacting really well and particularly the IPO which is the governing body of most production houses um, has agreed and signed an MOU with SWIFT to implement our code of conduct which Natalie mentioned earlier um, into all of their contracts because it starts with that having a legal leg to stand on where the code of conduct outlines and each and every person on that set has signed it anyone else who's on whatever value, part of the value chain has signed that to agree to not perpetuating this behavior okay. and so at least once we if there is a case and there is a code of conduct there's somewhere that we're starting from and I suppose if they want to get in touch with you they should go to it's not okay hashtag it's not okay right? that's and not that's okay. where they'll find the yes. details and uh, our Facebook page it, yes. that's not okay I said yes. it's not okay yes. so oh, I've got to get it right yes. it, that's, that's not, not okay. okay. Yes. That's not okay. That's yes. not okay. That's not okay. Yeah. Natalie, thank you very much. And Zoe, thank, thank you, you very too. much. And Thanks. good luck to you guys. Thank you, thank you very much. much. Okay, so though you are there you are, you can um, get in touch with that's not okay. It's hashtag that's not okay. Yes. And then they will take uh, your report anonymously. Remember, in a short time, we will be talking about editorial interference in newsrooms. If you've got questions or comments, send them to hashtag Network.